Well, let's bring up this story we got from TimCast.com. YouTube and Twitter delete Joe Rogan's interview with vaccine inventor Dr. Malone. The interview regarding COVID vaccines and mandates was removed days after Robert Malone's Twitter was also suspended. uh, So I I don't think it was posted by uh, Joe Rogan, though. Do you guys know who uploaded this? Um, It was Malone himself, right? Well, when Peter McCullough was on, he uploaded the full interview on his YouTube channel, and YouTube took that video down. So I don't know if Robert Malone uploaded it on his YouTube channel. I think Malone had already been... uh, kicked off of Twitter by the time he went on road. Twitter, he but, but yeah. as far as the YouTube, YouTube video, YouTube, the YouTube video know. was uploaded in full and then it was taken down. Let me, so. let me, let me tell you, check this out. So when this when this episode on the, of the Joe Rogan experience dropped with Dr. Malone, naturally it was getting huge, huge uh, buzz. Everybody was talking about it. They just banned this guy. And so I opened Spotify. Normally when I open Spotify, it's like the Joe Rogan experience front and center trying to advertise it. There was nothing. Huh. So I scroll around and I'm like, all right, I'll hit podcasts. I hit podcast, nothing. Hmm. And then I'm like, where's Joe Rogan? I couldn't find him. I was At first, I was just trying to search through like, okay, podcast, okay, comedy, nothing, entertainment, nothing, news. What? Every time I used to open that before, it was like front and center, watch Joe Rogan. So then I just had to manually search Joe Rogan experience, found it, went into his show profile, found it and played it. That may be nothing. Maybe the Spotify algorithm was like, Tim, we don't think you actually want to listen to Joe Rogan, even though it's like the only thing you listen to on Spotify. So we're not going to suggest it to you right now. But then I started seeing videos pop up. Someone posted a video where they were trying, they they were playing a bunch of podcasts on Spotify. They even played Timcast IRL. And then when they opened up Joe Rogan with Malone, it wouldn't load. Hmm. And he was like, I can't get it to play. I don't understand. So I don't know if there is, you know, some, some, you know, something going on. Maybe not. But I got, I got, I just got to. Every time there's an accident or a mistake, it's or coincidence, whatever coincidence, so it's only ever affecting this kind of thing. When when people get banned, oh, it was a mistake. We didn't mean to ban you. Oh yeah, but wh- how often is the our, our left establishment people getting banned? Yeah, when that happens, I just scream Illuminati. <laughs> uh, but but no, again, I, it, it's also important not to jump to conclusions. But but yeah. it, it's also there's there's so many coincidences that always work in the favor of very powerful people. How do you draw the line here? I mean, there also was a lot of internal fighting between some Spotify staff members and Joe Rogan. Is there a deliberate effort to undermine him? Maybe we don't know. But but the fact is, like these interviews the the peter mccullough tens of millions of people millions of people are, have been downloading it I, th- I, I think last week it was 40 million people downloaded the peter mccullough interview which how, do, is how huge. do you know how do you know um those are the some of the numbers that released, come up. i think they yeah. released the the stats really? on the the malone it was 40 million mm. on the malone one or the last malone? week no, this was no, uh, no this is peter mccullough oh McCullough. The, this is the number that i saw shared around by a lot of individuals uh 40 million for me P- Peter McCullough last week. Those those videos are still up. They're still gaining a lot of views. Robert Malone, I don't know the exact numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and again, we're talking about... It, it's not unlikely. It, it's very likely, especially with all likely, the news dude. and buzz. Look, we've seen all of these stories about Spotify going after... Like Spotify employees demanding Joe Rogan be like banned or removed and they mm-hmm. won't do it. So is, is, it, is it absurd then to think that these employees have just, you know, put their thumb on the scale a little bit? I'll put it this way. Does there need to be a concerted effort to go after Joe's uh, content through infrastructure on Spotify? No, there doesn't. There just needs to be like a dude. He's sitting in his office and they're all like, hey, we need you to, you know, update that form, you know, internally to make sure, you know, the Joe Rogan show is going to publish on time. He goes, oh, OK, I'll get to it. And then he laughs, pulls out his phone and starts playing, you know, yeah. uh, angry. Well, did you guys see today that there was it was announced that uh, Random House will not be publishing a collection of Norman Mailer? Because one of their junior employees complained about one of his essays that they, they thought was racially insensitive. Now, of course, this guy was writing in the 60s, mm. uh, a gonzo journalist writing all kinds of things. He was mostly a left, left-leaning left guy, a left-wing guy. Um, but that's kind of what it takes in a lot of these situations now is that you have these large firms. They have employee revolts. And it might could be a very small employee revolt. And they have to do something to appease them, right? Uh, in this case, they canceled the entire book. One of the most famous kind of 60s gonzo journalists. Um, and I think they actually informed his family, like his surviving family, they wouldn't be publishing the book, one of the largest publishers. But this is happening all over the place. I mean, Netflix had an internal revolt over Dave Chappelle. Now, right. we learned at the end of the day, it was just a tiny number of employees, right? It was a few mm-hmm. dozen who walked out. This is a, a massive company. And yet, the company had to go through, like, you know, crisis mode internally. I, you know, I, from what I understand, it was quite intense uh, within that environment because I think that 
unfortunately in a lot of these environments they are not um you know they've, they've inverted the the leadership it's it's kind of ruled by the angry or fearful minority right it's not that the ceo tells the junior staffer hey we're we're a company about uh, you know putting out these products that people want to watch and want to see and we, you don't have a veto over them but they, they won't tell them that i feel like with youtube and twitter facebook etc they got the opposite message from uncle ben dying you know, you guys know Uncle Ben, he said, you know, he's like, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm. And Peter's like, I'll be here from now on. Uh, so, you know, Facebook was like, we have all of this power, but we'll be damned if we want to take responsibility for anything. That's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It's all of Silicon Valley. What they don't, first of all, there is political, there's, there's a political agenda for sure. And those elements exist, but there's also cowardice in these companies. And when it comes to a lot of the COVID policy, I think for the most part, it is fear of liability. And there's no liability when you're like, hey, man, look, it's just what Fauci said of the World Health Organization. So if you get someone like Dr. Malone, who's like, for the most part, a lone voice, and he's saying things, they're like, someone's going to sue us. And that's you you can look at a lot of their policies, fear of liability. So what what they're basically saying is if we just ban everybody who dissents from like the official narrative, you can't hold us responsible, but they are the public space. These debates need to happen. They are banning dissenting scientific voices. And I'll show you this. We have this from the Atlantic, a smear piece on Dr. Malone, but it does say, it effectively says that Dr. Malone invented mRNA technology. They say his two studies from, was it 1989, demonstrating how RNA could be delivered into cells using lipids. Which uh, which are basically tiny globules of fat, which could be used as a, as a vaccine or a vaccine delivery method. These studies indeed represent seminal work in the field of gene transfer, according to Ryan Verbeek, a postdoctoral fellow at Ghent University in Belgium and the lead author of a 2019 history of mRNA vaccine development. Indeed, Malone's studies are the first two references in Verbeek's paper out of 224 in total. So whether or not you want to say he invented mRNA, mm-hmm. I'll put it this way. If like the first ever in, in, inception of mRNA technology comes from this one dude or his team, then yeah, isn't that inventing something? It doesn't mean he invented the core products. It doesn't mean he made, fl- like, you know, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, they say. Did he invent the fluorescent light bulb? No. But you still say he invented the light bulb, right? They're trying to make it seem like he's got no grounds to communicate. They're lying. They're claiming he's not an expert. There, there are these, these government, you know, uh, funded scientists saying things like he just played a minor role and has nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Is he a PhD? Is he a doctor who special, specializes in vaccines? Has he worked with the government in this regard? OK, then why are we not allowed to hear what he has to say? Absolutely. And I don't think uh, big tech is worried about lawsuits because what, what are you going to sue people for? This scientist provided some scientific data. Get him. Sue him. They can't do that. And and if, if anything, the information being provided here adds context and information and allows people to have informed consent. One of the things that Dr. Robert Malone brought up that I thought was, was very instrumental here, he didn't only talk about the profit incentives of Pfizer here. He also talked about bigger institutions, financial institutions like BlackRock. He talked about the big financial systems that have a lot of egregious power that along with big tech are working in unison to stifle out any kind of questioning of their product that they're trying to get you to take. That is a scary situation because you're giving people godlike power and authority when you're able to censor information from the general public. That is scary. That is terrifying. And if everyone, everyone should know about this. And I think this is why we're seeing such a huge scramble of people being like, hey, this is absolutely terrifying. I need to move over, get away to a totally different platform where I could actually listen to another side of the story here, which is absolutely critically important. I, I feel like Joe Rogan's viewership is, is, is more now than when it was when he was on YouTube. Huh. Yeah. I was wondering, you know, in, in question the larger move from YouTube to, to Spotify. And I think if he's able to have a better, closer relationship with Spotify, which it looks like he has, he's able to get, get away with a lot more because if he was still on YouTube, you'd have, YouTube would have taken the videos down. YouTube mm-hmm. is already taking the videos down. So, yeah. so this is one of the ways that he still was able to position himself in a way where these videos are getting tens of millions of downloads and views, but they can't be taken well, down. This- by YouTube. This, is, this is, I think, one of the points of leverage that Rogan would have over Spotify is that Spotify is a much smaller company than Google, right? Much smaller company than than uh, what Alphabet or, or YouTube can provide, um, meaning that he's a much bigger asset to Spotify, right? 
I mean, they they paid a hundred million dollars to bring him over. I think what was the deal? That was what that was what uh, I think Wall Street Journal reported. And but so, you, you you never know because it could be like over ten years. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I doubt it's that long. But the idea is that he's going to be a you know, he's going to be a lot of revenue for them as well, right? Absolutely. Um, meaning that you know whatever pressures they have within the company, whatever pressures they get externally from news media, whatever pressures they get externally from government. If he's making them money and they have their own infrastructure, he has a point of leverage over them. And I think that point of leverage is greater than what he would have had over YouTube, given this to the relative sizes of the companies. I saw this story uh, about a guy whose muscles are turning to bone. You ever hear about that stuff, Mm -mm. that disorder? Huh. You've heard about that, Leo? No, I haven't. Where it's like, um, so normally when you exercise, your muscles, the proteins will break down and then your body replaces it with, you know, proteins and it grows stronger or or whatever. I'm not, I can't tell you exactly how it works, but, um... Apparently, there are some people that when the muscle breaks, it's replaced with calcium and just starts turning to bone. That's kind of how I feel things are going right now. Over time, when somebody like ages out or retires or moves on from a position, it gets replaced by an, an ideologue, an immovable object that creates rigidity and structural damage. Mm. That's why you're, you, we're at the point now where you've got like Spotify, big company, Probably has a lot of money to lose, a lot of money to make, but you get a small portion of individuals who appear when a certain position opens up or when a certain position, you know, someone moves on from it. The woke millennial types or whatever Gen Z types come in and then just that one person, it's like bone in your muscle. All of a sudden you're struggling to move. You can't function properly and the system just starts collapsing and failing. I saw that story and I was like, it kind of feels like what's happening to our society, you know, at a certain point they may just put a feeding tube in the mouth of our culture. And that the government will just start subsidizing and funding things out of fear of collapse and economic failure. And then we're and then we're doomed. And then they'll give them a whole bunch of fentanyl. But that's my own personal perspective. But you made a very good point because YouTube could afford to lose Rogan. Spotify can't. They invested into him. And I'll be honest, when Rogan first moved onto Spotify, I was like, there's no way I'm downloading another app. I'm not doing this. Um, you know, I'll look at the small clips that, that he releases. But but with the debates, with the people that Rogan had on, Robert Kennedy Jr., Dr. Peter McCullough, uh, Dr. Robert Malone, having these important conversations, I can't miss it. I had to download the app. I had to I had to sign up for an account and, and I had to listen to it because it was the only way I could. And it's not just me. It's a lot of disenfranchised people who are asking some serious questions that the government can't answer right now as the government has been caught time and time again lying, putting their foot in their mouth, and absolutely not telling the people the truth. It's very evident right now, especially with cases surging, that all of their plans, everything they did, hasn't hasn't worked at all. So people are left with some serious questions. Rogan is helping those questions be answered by presenting so much data and information and letting them decide what actions and moves to make for themselves with informed consent like they should have had from the very beginning. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about. So you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.